So today is the seminar, and um, we are also streaming this. So this is also getting live in uh, my YouTube channel. Uh, it will be a regular class. Um, so so today's the today is the seminar. Yeah. So this gets and, uh, streamed in the YouTube also channel, streaming but, uh, so this is also it does not inter uh, interrupt our class. My so the regular class, which is kind of getting uh, streamed on YouTube. Class. Uh, so, uh, so today's uh, topic today's is uh, yeah. yeah, following games so and uh, basically uh, implementing those ideas in uh, different games. So we will see some uh, very famous examples, like uh, really famous. And uh, we'll see how uh, how those ideas got implemented in other games. I'm almost sure that uh, the first examples are what you are going to spot immediately, uh, like already some of you said in the chat. Uh, yes, this is the famous uh, Reti Tata Kova. Absolutely. Okay, apparent is my voice okay? I get some chats uh, like there's some echo, but probably that's only in YouTube and uh, not here. So okay, one shift you can take care of that. All right, so this is the famous Tata Kova. Uh, give me in chat uh, what what did White play in this position? I I simply cannot believe that uh, I will not believe that somebody has not seen this position because this is the uh, typical uh, position that we see. Uh, you know. This is probably the tenth game I saw in chess. You know, it was in my first top ten games. Like very basic. Yeah. So in the game, uh, Long Castle happened, of course. Knight e4, and uh, all of us know it's the famous queen d8 takes bishop g5. King e8 is rook d8. King c7 is bishop d8 mate. Uh, this was played in 1910. Our next game, so the game was between Reti Tartakova, 1910, Vienna. Our next game is this. Black played b5. Take, take. Can somebody recognize this game? Who is white, who is black? Uh, the topic of today's class is uh, implementing ideas from, uh, you know, from different games. No, it's not you, Yangi, Tanisha. Uh, take a guess what white played at this position. So white was Li Chao, 2640 plus, and black was Bu Ziyangji. It was a classical game in, uh, I think this was some sort of Chinese league and white took white could play b3 and actually he's he's doing fine but white took queen in b7 uh, no wonder what happened but anyway put that in chat why this does not work very direct uh, but it's very interesting yeah something some game that was played in 1910 and then in 2009 a really strong grandmaster you know falls into uh, this this trick i am 100% sure you know licha thought this is not possible because any kind of bishop check with it doesn't matter whether it's bishop f3 or bishop d2 he definitely wanted to play bishop d3 and then white is winning but of course, same like uh, Reiki Tartako again. Uh, Queen takes d1 and uh, black, white resign. King d1, bishop f3 is made, and king e3, I guess, rook, rook e8, and it's over. Let's see some more famous games. Uh, this will be some sort of warm up. How many of you can tell uh, who is white, who is black? Very famous game also. And what move was played in the game? It's also a classical game. Uh, it's like classics, basically. 
He was played in 1919. Uh, excellent, yeah, Vaishali, uh, Aryan, Alberto. Actually, Aryan even said who is white. So that's kind of impressive, yeah. So totally right, yeah. This is uh, Winter Capablanca from 1919. Uh, a thematic game, uh, since it's very popular, okay, I'm, I'm not going to uh, show this in depth, but the point is, of course, G5. Uh, knight G5 we cannot do because of knight D5. And after take, take bishop G3. Uh, one last crucial move. Yeah, uh, absolutely, Aryan. Bishop G4. And interestingly, uh, even computer uh, claims this position is slightly better for black. But in reality, OK, this bishop is uh, completely dead and Capablanca won without uh, any difficulty. I'm not going through the full game, but uh, yeah, you, you, you guys can check this game later. It's uh, such a famous game. Now, um, let's see the next game. It's OK, right, if I skip this game? So this is pretty common. Black to play. Yeah, if someone is having any technical issue in the class, like, you know, uh, if you are unable to see the board or anything, I think it's always better to message admin. There's always an admin in the class who will uh, take care of all your issues. Black to play. Think about it. Yeah, it's not going to be uh, that simple. Uh, we are slowly raising the level a bit. To our YouTube audience, uh, so this is a seminar uh, for group two to four. So to give you an idea, it's like uh, from uh, fourteen hundred to twenty four hundred. And uh, yeah, usually we have one day seminar, otherwise uh, one or two day seminar, otherwise the classes are mostly individual. So this one is a seminar. I'm still, uh, I'm still not getting, uh, I still not got the right answer yet. Yeah, this one is actually a tough problem so far. Uh, so these are the moves I got. G5, knight e4, a5, and also rook g8. You know, let's let's eliminate one by one. First of all, to those who said knight e4, I understand, you know, you are attacking the queen. And if white, black, white takes the e7 queen, you take on d2. But rook e4, it just defends the bishop and we are a piece down. So let's, uh, let's not think about knight e4. The move that we want to play is, uh, of course, we want to play g5. There is no doubt on this, like Winter Capablanca. After g5, what is the only move that you should be calculating? Absolutely. White is not going to play bishop g3. White will simply take. Take queen takes g5. Now, already rook g8 is sort of only move. Some check here, rook g1 check, king f8 check. And it is, it kind of gets complicated. It's not clear. Our knight is still pinned. Sorry, Kanan, you cannot see the alphabets. What does that mean? Uh, 
the board alphabets well i can i can do something like this yeah so anyway queen h8 king d7 queen h3 check and it's not clear we don't want to get uh, king c6 and the position kind of became uh, messy so not g5 many of you said uh, to play rook g8 a very interesting move giving a clear threat threat of g5 tell me what is the move that we should uh, uh, what what we should consider here yes vaishali absolutely right this is the reason why g5 is uh, not working uh, sorry why rook g8 is not working white plays f4 of course and now after take take g5 there is queen f5 and the king moves okay now this bishop is not dead this is alive and actually black is going to be dead so so there is no rook g8 in the game black played queen d7 why is queen d7 not so great aryan you can uh, write the message oh, okay you wrote But uh, Aryan, we already addressed knight into e4. It was not working because of rook into e4. Uh, Tony, what was your move? What was uh, the move that you suggested? Ah, uh, queen d7. Yeah, yeah, queen d7. Uh, the problem is okay now. Black immediately gets, uh, you know. Uh, bishop f white gets rid of the bishop and then this bishop is not dead anymore let's get back to the rook g8 variation uh the one uh, which we were discussing so playing rook g8 we don't mind if white takes bishop f6 then we take here its structure is uh, broken well Uh, Aryan says after g5 bishop g5 knight into e4. Okay, you are just one uh, pawn down. Yeah, he takes rook into e4. You have compensation, but no more. So once uh, let's say rook g8 happens, we said f4 takes. Sorry, takes takes. Why did g5 uh, not work in this position? Because of queen f5 check. So what should be the another candidate move exactly antony and also someone else said before i i'm, I'm pretty sure i saw king h8 yeah. samurg said uh, king h8 also absolutely king h8 uh, would have given black a straight forward advantage a very difficult move to uh, spot unless you go through this variation it feels kind of weird like right? Uh, right to play king h8 here now think about king h8 certainly there is g5 and we uh, we kind of uh, stopped we kind of stopped uh, his uh, his plan of playing f5 Well, yeah, Aryan, you are right. Let me address uh, Aryan. Uh, you could play g5, bishop g5. You are not a pawn down after knight e4. You are right. But after this take, okay, you have probably have to take with queen because. You are definitely not better. Right. uh if here knight g8 this does not work again because queen f5 check and we are lacking square we'll just get mated here yeah so by playing king h8 you just get an advantage you simply get an advantage here 
like how is he going to stop G5? There is simply no way to stop G5. And if he takes bishop f6, we take queen into f6. White played rook g1. Uh, now how should black continue? Yeah, totally. Rook g8 and now again there is no way to stop g5. So this kind of answers, right? This kind of answers... Yes, you had some move like uh, like Aryan was saying. There is g5. Somebody said a5. But this, these moves are not giving you advantage. There is no way you are getting advantage. But after king h8, you are actually killing the game. Either he has to pick when the pawn structure is big, or he has to go, let's say, rook g1. We go rook g8. There is no way to stop g5. So king h8 is a fantastic move. And then we get the similar position. Moving on to the next one. Kanan, uh, sorry, but we have already addressed this uh, before you joined. So G5 was not working because of Bishop into G5. Yeah. Short team man. Of course, uh, I can't uh, imagine someone not knowing this game. But uh, you do understand, yeah? Like, I'm not going to show... Uh, something that uh, knowing that everybody knows. Of course, short timan and the famous king walk. This, of course, everyone knows. How many people can say who is white, who is black here? No, this is not Fisher. Not Karuana. This is Sutovsky. I mean, Sutovsky was white in uh, 2015. Do I need to say what happened in the game? Yeah, king is running. Now king is running. But it's interesting that king is actually aiming here, but this time not to uh, mate, but actually to take this pawn. The game is very interesting. King h2, bishop a6, king g3. Yes, I uh, I showed this in one, in one of my stream. Black's first mistake, I think, was to change queens. Black played queen b8. After that, it's kind of getting... It makes it white's life easier to enter to g7. Maybe he should have played something like queen b2. You know, creating counter... And after queen d6 to play something like king d7. The position remains very sharp in this case. And uh, yeah, uh, computer calls it equal. But in the game, uh, queen b8 was played. What was very interesting is, uh, let's think once. How do you play as black? No, this was Sutoski white and uh, Zifroni 2491. He was black. There are many ways to hold this position, actually. Okay, Sai, if you want to get your bishop to e8, why are you going through bishop c8, d7? You could go via b5. King c8, king d8, king e8 is exactly what happened in the game. And that's not uh, that's not working. So let's see, this rook is going to be tied down. I mean, there is we don't have time to take this pawn and to pin this pawn. White will take, and once this pawn is gone, we are dead. Nicholas, very good. Very good, Nicholas. So can we say when white king comes here, we can kind of defend. Before that, tell me, the moment white plays king g5, what is he threatening? As soon as the king is on g5, what is the threat? Yeah, knight g6 or actually knight into f7 because to gain the tempo. So, so when whenever white plays king g5, what do we need? 
we need to be ready so that after knight f7, king f7, king g6, we can protect. So we can play bishop e8. So we have to play bishop d5 at some moment. It doesn't matter whether it is this move or next move. So can we say with the bishop on b5 and with this rook here, we can temporarily hold this position. We cannot hold permanently, but temporarily. If you bring your king to e8, anyway, you cannot come to f8, like white king is coming to g7. Then king is stuck, rook is stuck, and with this bishop, okay, we, we can come here, but he'll play c3, and then there is no attack. So this king belongs where? c3 yeah basically you need to counter attack with uh, your own king so that's why you know it doesn't matter whether you're playing this move this move or this sorry or this move it's essentially the same plan so like, let's say king b7 king d5 now we already know what is the only move here bishop b5 so we stop the knight f7 idea and I was checking this uh, line. There are many ways. Okay, let me just give you some straightforward variation. So still there is no knight into f7 because of bishop e8. Now threatening knight f7. And black is just holding somehow. Knight f7 is happening now. What is black's defense? Uh, even if king f8 in that position, we would come to the similar position. No, rook c8 is king into f7. Vaishali, very good, once again. Bishop c2. Yeah, Teresa, absolutely. So you're stopping knight f7 due to bishop d3 threat. Like now knight f7, there is suddenly bishop d3. It still remains very sharp. I mean, the game kind of goes on, yeah? White can play knight uh, g5 or something. But let's say bishop c2, white plays bishop e2. Or g3, it doesn't really matter. Let's say something like that, yeah? Now what to do? No, g5 will not be able to survive that long. We need, we need counter attack. Imagine you play g5, he takes, and you don't have bishop g6. He'll simply take that. Uh, yes, exactly. We have to do counter attack. There's just no way. The, the reason why king is here, yeah? King f4, knight f7, king b3. And uh, position still remains very sharp. I, I really don't know how to evaluate uh, a position like this. I can easily say, you know, computer says 0 0.00, but uh, in a practical game, uh, all sorts of results are possible. In the game, this did not happen. Yeah, it's unclear. I mean, uh, for computer, everything is uh, 0 0.00 and evaluation, uh, which here it makes no sense. Yeah? Like if I will be playing in a tournament game, any of us will be playing in a tournament game, we can never be sure about the evaluation of this position. It's such a sharp position. In the game, black played king c8. And then, now you see the difference, right? Like, the bishop on e8 would have allowed the king to attack this pawn. But with the king on e8, this bishop is not good enough to attack the pawn. Because once it plays c3, game is over. And that's what happened in the game. Bishop b5, bishop b2. Now what is this bishop doing? He has no target. If we could switch it, then of course king b3, king c3, and then as we saw. And I think somewhere here, uh, yeah, black resigned because, okay, what to do for h5? White is playing h5, white will take. And, okay, let's say if we wait. Oh, we cannot wait. There's bishop a4 check. And resigns. So for me, this game was very interesting, not only because of uh, it resembles uh, short team man,
but also uh, you know at this point the only way to stop this king march is to make sure we are also entering somewhere or other it's kind of very instructive let's see next one no one should say uh, they don't know this position not a single player okay Yes, absolutely. This is a move of the century, as they call it. Uh, this is uh, uh, topple of uh, Shirov. Oh, some some of you even... Okay, I at least got some... Uh... Okay, for those who doesn't know the position, this is going to come as a complete shock. And the uh, rest of your life, you'll never forget this. So a very standard way could be to play king f5, king e4. So let's say I put my bishop somewhere here. But the problem is there is this. And after king f5, there is again king e3. So there is no entry here. Yeah? And you cannot go here because I take. If you want to enter from the other side, okay, we can say, let's say I play this. So king f2, king f5, but again g3 on time. So uh, after bishop f1, again, there is block it. Yeah, most of you gave the correct answer, absolutely. Uh, but just for those who are new to this position. And if you try to enter from this side, uh, let's say even if I don't take, yeah, I go here, I go here, this, take, and there is never end. There is never any entry. So, Shiro. So, in 2006, I was working with Shiro. I was in Latvia. I worked with Shirov uh, in the period 2006 and 7. Oh no, 2006 to 8, I think, almost. So we were discussing about this game, and I asked him, you know, uh, how was it? Like in Linares, you played this move. How was uh, Topolov's reaction and so on? Of course, Topolov was not expecting uh, uh, Bishop H3 in this position. And then Shirov goes like, uh, yeah, Topolov was actually walking while I was thinking. And of course, when I played the move, you know, he started. Uh, he sat there and he was thinking for a long time. Now, this move, Bishop H3, at least back in uh, 2006, no engine could find. No engine could find uh, Bishop H3. And uh, Shirov told me, you know, I tried with uh, engines at higher depth, but they are simply not understanding. Because for engine, uh, this position is, uh, it, it will give winning. But it doesn't show the winning plan because there is no winning plan unless you play bishop h3. And then there was this, uh, I was teasing Shirov. Uh, he said, there is no engine which can find this. I said, I know one engine which can find, th find this move in one second. And he kind of took it personally. He's like, what kind of engine is this? So I, I, gave, uh, I gave an engine and it showed immediately bishop h3. So back then there was an engine by I think Fritz, which says Fritz give away. So it's basically playing losing chess. Where you know, if you kind of sacrifice all your pieces, everything, then you win. And there, of course, the first move was bishop h3. Because it's like after gh3, he wants to play d4. If you take it moves, it takes bishop f6. It's basically playing losing chess. So that was the only engine which could spot bishop h3. Uh, anyways, uh, so bishop h3 happened in the game. King f2 doesn't help because after king f5, king f3 we take. In the game, gh3 happened. Uh, it, am I visible? OK. Actually, guys, if any of you are having some technical issue, right, if you directly message to me, it kind of a bit distracting for me. So I think it's better if you have any kind of technical issues, like let's say if you cannot see the board or you cannot see uh, me or you cannot hear me, it's always better to put admin. And any chess related stuff, you put it to me, okay? So king f2, king e4 happened. And after bishop f6, d4. It's a very famous game. Now we are queening this pawn. Uh, 
uh, risk, there is nothing to show basically. Here, Topolov resigned because the king is coming here and there's no way we can stop these two pawns. Question. What was Shiro's inspiration for this game? Where did Shirov, was this idea original or he saw it also somewhere? Okay, he saw it. In which game? You know, Shirov was the victim in the following game. Shiro was white. The previous game was Linares 1998. This is 1991. Shiro is white and Ulf Anderson is black. Shiro was 26 then and Ulf Anderson was 26 25. Yeah, I don't, I guess I don't have to say the move. Guys, in two seconds. Yeah, without a doubt. Exactly, Bishop H4 was played in the game. Uh, if you guys have read the book Fire on Board, there are two, two parts on it. An amazing book. Uh, on the second part, uh, you will get in the introduction, I think Shirov mentions this, that uh, he was the victim. And uh, this idea, of course, stayed Fire on Board, Shirov's best games. Fire on Board, or Fire on the Board. There are two volumes. And now the king enters. Of course, bishop h3 is, you know, uh, here bishop h4 is uh, understandable. It's not uh, that difficult as compared to, let's say, the previous game where we are going bishop h3. But idea is similar. The king is entering. Yeah, also I saw some people said, uh, there was a uh, uh, Nihal Hari Krishna game, uh, which is also similar. So that one uh, is more common. Uh, here, uh, this is my game. I tried something similar, but uh, it's interesting, but uh, black is not winning. Why didn't he play Bishop E2? Oh, that's interesting, yeah. So Bishop H4, let's say you make some move. Uh, let's say something, yeah, let's say Bishop C2. The winning plan is very straightforward. So you go bishop uh, somewhere. And uh, the bishop is right now kind of stuck. So king f3. And once again, this king enters. How does this king enter? What is the rook? Uh, give me the full root. Uh, Swastik and Devansh. Give me the exact root, not just first two squares. Root two, you know, how, how do you get to white's uh, camp? Yeah, like white will keep the bishop here. So there is no a4, there is no e4. With this bishop, you cannot win. So you need your king somewhere. Well, if you play a4, you will take. Yeah, then even if you play king a5, I'm not sure if this will be winning. Yes. And there is apparently very little white can do about it. Let's see something like this. Okay, let's see white is waiting. You cannot play king g2 because of e4. So I'm entering. Again, the main thing is the bishop is, bishop has to stay on this diagonal. So there is never bishop d3. And if you play a move like king f2, I give a check and now you have to decide. Do you want to give me this or do you want to give me this? Either way, it's kind of uh, losing. And finally, I'm, you know, it comes here, it gets e4, e3, then subsequently it will uh, get to d4 and it kind of lo loses. So yeah, back to this game. Uh, this was my game against Gopal in uh, 2008, uh, US, uh, US World Open in Philadelphia. The position is essentially draw. 
I played king e8. I cannot play a3 because of bishop b4 check, obviously. So king e8 happened. Bishop b4. Now what? What move? Yes, Nihal. Yeah, basically uh, all of you, yeah. This does not win why it has a defense, but uh, this is the best uh, that can be done. Because let's see if I make a normal move. It's a king d7 here, this here. The king is blocked. So, you know, just, just any move and there is no entry. He'll just wait and after I play b5, he'll play king c3. So that's why uh, I took on f3. Of course, I knew Shirov game uh, and that was the inspiration. But here, white is just on time to hold the game. So the fight is all about this square. By giving bishop f3, you know, I'm just, I just got one important tempo. Which means he cannot stop b5, b4. But as it turns out, uh, there is not enough weakness in his position. And uh, Gopal could hold the game completely fine. So here I had a choice. I could play, let's say, king b3. And uh, still there is no win. I mean, how? let's say if I play b4, there's always king c1. King c3, king b1. And again, not able to create any play. So in the game, I played b5. But black is holding. Oh, sorry, white is holding. We got as close as possible. Where do you put the bishop? Do you put it in this diagonal or this diagonal? Where the bishop should be? H6G5? Are you sure you want to go here or here? What is happening if you go on these two squares? Yeah, a1 is a threat. So whenever black plays a1, you need bishop a3. Like a1, king a1, king c2, you need your bishop on a3. It's very important. So we need the bishop in this diagonal, but not on a3. OK, it's still probably possible to play on a3, but it kind of makes the life uh, complicated. You know, then you have to calculate all sorts of line. Gopal made the most logical move, just bishop e7. And king e3, bishop g5. King e4, bishop h6. King d3, now the only move. Uh, Siddharth, then uh, you play, uh, at the end of your variation, you play bishop b2. Yeah, bishop h8, of course. And the game ended in a draw. But uh, yeah, and every time I attack this pawn, he goes bishop h6. Let's see something, uh, some more games uh, in similar theme. 1909, this game was played. Oh, Aryan, I'm very impressed with you, actually. Uh, you are not only saying who is black, but you're also saying who is white. I mean, I would not have said, uh, I could not, I don't think I would have said who was white. I, of course, know who is black. Yeah, this is uh, Rubenstein is black and Con Rich is white from St. Petersburg, 1909. Yes, all of you are right. Absolutely, all of you are right uh, in the class. I don't see a single wrong answer actually in the class. Very, very impressive. Okay, now I got one. <laughs> but yeah, uh, like the king goes to h3. It's a straightforward plan. And then the plan is as follows. You somehow create a path. You somehow create a pass pawn on g4. Okay, it takes, let's say you take and you play g3. 
you change every single pawn out there and your king starts collecting all these pawns it's fairly straightforward plan but very classical king on extreme now we fix we fix for that this it doesn't really matter here like whether we play b5 or not but it makes a lot of sense since white is unable to move very straightforward and resigns who is white who is black no it's not rustam barev kasparov close vaishali very close sveshnikov kasparov 1979 let's make it slightly challenging how do you play here as white beautiful antony that's actually the only move to stay in the game devar go right the we are also right ivan if you play that move then uh, it's kind of uh, gets to the same game okay sai devansh leonardo you are allowing you want to stop something but you are allowing something different nicolas nihal jeroen all of you are right thorsten also you are allowing something different in between all the moves and answer i i also get a comment that my whatsapp dp is good okay thank you yeah so let's let's deal with this in the game bishop c5 happens sveshnikov played bishop c5 but then we already know the plan we are not on time and kasparov of course knows his classics okay what is the only winning move here what is the difference between a5 or b4 would you play a5 or would you play b4 or both are winning do you think both are winning yeah your intuition is correct Shashmita, I think uh, you made a very good point. A5 keeps the tempo somehow. No, both are not good. Imagine this: you play B5. Now you are kind of fixed. This side nobody moves. Yeah. So after B5, okay, let's say I play King A1. A5, King B1. Play A4. Take, take. And now you are missing. Yeah, you are missing uh, King A3. but if you start with a5 what is the difference a4 b4 how would you take here pawn or king yes king and the difference is you have saved this tempo how does this tempo helps us the moment we play king b2 now there is b4 it puts white in zooks one in the game king b1 was played what is the only move to win that's not a rocket science anymore yeah exactly all the students basically king a3 and that's how the game ended getting back to the first position some of you said bishop e1 but this allows another entry king e4 the ideal move would have been bishop e3 here the difference is take take king c5 what is the only drawing move yeah i can see some of you are like you want to answer so fast that there is some typing error so like those who are saying b3 or k3 i totally agree that uh, you know you meant uh, a3 of course a3 is important guys you need to stop uh, king b4 king a3 so bishop e3 was the only way 
in in the game by the way in the game we could not play a3 because there was king d4 Yeah, bishop, bishop e3 and uh, and it's not clear. I mean, another, um, my favorite book, Positional Decision Making. I believe uh, this, this particular example was given there also. Those who have not read this book, please do get it. It's by Boris Gelfand. Yeah, Vaishali, fantastic. It's Salem versus Kramnik in Qatar, 2014. Positional decision making. Let me put that in Zoom chat uh, so that uh, you can all see. Positional decision making by your friend. Right? So, yeah. Kramnik simply got his king to h3. It's not the exact, uh, like the plan is same. Of course, he, in the game, white had a lot. White had chances to, you know, save the position. Maybe some sort of A4 was important. How we will know who is white? Uh, is it we have to see analyze all games? No, it's not like that. Um, I think once you start seeing games, you it somehow stays like. Uh, once you see these classics, even if you don't remember the name, it's, it's fine. It's not a big deal, as long as you remember the ideas. Knight A2 was a weird move, but uh, okay, one can understand, you know, he wants to regroup. King, this move actually just did not understand at all. I guess White was playing in uh, some kind of uh, time pressure. So King E1 happened in the game. Still, it was possible to hold. But uh, somewhere here, uh, machine is defending with Knight E2, King H3, F4. And trying to get to the square. But OK, in the game, it was Knight B3. But then again, uh, so we see white kind of uh, Hesitated. For instance, here, let's say he did not want to play king f1 because I guess he was not willing to allow uh, the entry. But when he played king e1, followed by knight c1, it's probably the idea was to play knight e2. I mean, again, I cannot completely be sure how Salem was thinking at this point. But after king h4, uh, he... Uh, he decided to change the plan and go knight b3. And then if he wanted knight b3, why not to play knight c1 at this point? And king h5 then to play knight b3. And also, okay, after king f1, it's not exactly like uh, black is getting an entry because this pawn is hanging, as Siddhant also pointed out. So I think white mixed up the plan somewhere. Or it is also possible when uh, king g6 happened, he, uh, he was not expecting king h5, king h4. But by the time White uh, started some counterplay, it was already too late. Yeah, the rest of the game was uh, uh, not very... Uh, I mean, uh, there were many ways to win and Kramnik found uh, the, the most concrete way. But the plan is similar, right? I like this, by the way. Knight g3. What is Black's move here? Yeah, basically forced. White has to go h4. Yeah. Again, there were many ways to win, and uh, at this point, Salem resigned. 
we'll see uh, two very important classic actually this one is one of my favorite b6 was played in the game is b6 a good move who is white who is black everybody starts saying oh no this is not carp of game no only you know no that's nice yes that's the game okay let's address one by one do you know who is white who is black in this position how many how many students are actually aware of this uh no karpov yes karpov system is similar structure but that's always after knight c3 b3 and then b6 uh that's that's the normal way to play b6 okay this is bodveni kalake very famous game from 1938 avro why is b6 bad move let's break it down with b6 we want to play bishop b7 and we want to make sure this diagonal is open ideally ideally it's better to first take and then play b6 to make sure this diagonal will be always open or you don't play b6 which is perfectly fine you know bishop f6 is the most natural move in the position yeah in the game uh, exactly nicolas was take uh, a lot of you said knight b5 knight d5 takes and now bishop b5 so for me this game uh, gets very interesting at this point bishop d7 queen f4 around here you know it's also interesting that uh, black could give an argument here that yeah you got queen f4 knight b5 but let's say i play knight b8 and my argument is okay i'm changing bad bishop with your good bishop but at the cost of uh, development and here we can see although black kind of managed to uh, let's say get rid of his black bad bishop but how to develop this knight if knight d7 okay rook c1 there is no rook c8 because e7 hangs bishop c7 is threatened up oh, sorry oh hang on yeah queen d7 is what exactly happened in the game sorry just not uh, not queen d7 if you play uh, if you play queen d7 here then uh, e7 is hanging at the end and i can play bishop b6 now i remember um, as a kid uh, i i i read it uh, in some botvinik book and it uh, it kind of stayed forever uh, with me he said at this point he was thinking two options one i could play rook c1 my opponent would probably play rook a7 rook e7 and then i take a control of c5 other option was i was considering to play queen e8 have the queen on e2 and take control over e5 so bodvenik is saying given a choice which uh, file should i control e or c what is the logic yes antony absolutely so he gave a logic uh, which is very simple and which i'll show you uh, i could use similar idea in uh, one of my game also exactly c file is farther away from the king now imagine this position just remove one remove the queens remove one pair of rooks now let's say we have only these for uh, these four squares now with white rook on c1 black rook on e8 we can simply play king f1 
E2 is control, C7 is further from the king. Hence, rook A C1. Very strong logic, cannot argue with this. Elegance says, okay, you got your file. You know what? I'll play F6. I restrict this knight. Next, I'm going to play rook F7 and I'll challenge this rook. How to play here as white? Okay, what did I say in every every class? What is my opponent threatening? Do I need to stop it? So a move like rook b7 is more about what I want to do. But you know, before you get there, you first ask what your opponent wants. The moment you play something like rook b7, you are kind of giving counter. It's not that it's a bad move, but it simply gives a counter. Now there will be, you know, like we'll play b5 here. I really like Botvinnik's move here, and I also like his explanation. Um, anyone knows? I, I know Leonardo already said the move. Xavier also said. So he says, let's let's think about this. Let me make a move. Let me make a random move. Let's say I play rook c1. Now, can I say whenever you play knight d7, I can play rook c7 if I want to. If you play king f7, I can still play rook c7. If you play rook e8, then also I can play rook c7, but then I have to take care of this square. What when he played the move king f1, and after rook f7, check here and his point is if i move this rook anywhere black is in some sort of zug zone king f7 rook e8 rook d8 knight d7 every single move is made by rook c7 where do i move this rook which square c3 c2 c1 which one is more intuitive absolutely c3 so i really like this idea that actually this rook alone just alone is taking care of these three pieces. If rook f7, very good question. If rook f7, it's white says pass. Make another move. Again, this rook is controlling these three pieces. So elegant goes g5. The moment black plays g5, which square got weak? Oh, sorry, sorry, this was not the game. That was a bad mouse click. f5. So, Lord Vinick says, you know, I will get my knight to f5. Now, I think we spoke about mindset, like to have, you know, fixed mindset and flexible mindset. This is one example. Look at the following few moves. Again, there are many ways to win, but uh, this game is really classic for various reasons. Black played h5. White could play knight c2, knight e3, knight f5, which is perfectly fine. In fact, computer also says that's one of the strongest. But the moment h5 is played, Bodvinik says, you know what? I don't want to get here. Now I, I want my knight here so that it will attack these two pawns. Exactly. So h4. So we said the moment knight moves, we have rook c7. Again, these are kind of fixed. And now he says, okay, please play g4. Press g4. I'm coming to f4. Now, this is a target. As long as this pawn is there, the knight is fixed. Knight cannot move because, okay, we'll take f4 pawn. If the knight stays here, the rook is also fixed. So what move should we make to make sure Yes, Thorsten, exactly. Absolutely so. F3, let's fix it. So now we have these three fixed. What move should we play? Again, if you turn on computer, computer says everything is winning. 
but very classical approach. Again, nothing is happening. Knight is fixed for this pawn. Rook is fixed for this pawn. There is no way ever this king can approach the rook. So, king f2. Rook f5. Now, I really like this move. This move made a very uh, strong impression on me when I saw it first time. Again, for computer, it absolutely does not matter. But it shows the Soviet culture, yes? Uh, the so-called... Uh, uh, Soviet technique. Do not rush in the end game. Do not hurry. And this move is really frustrating for black. It's possible to play b4, rook h6, rook g6, everything wins. White says, you know, you're fixed. You cannot do anything. I play b3. If someday you take this pawn, my this pawn is protected. King d8. Black says, you know, please take it. You know, I beg you, you take so that I play king c7 and I play knight c6. Oh, it says, no, I'm not going to take it. So keeping the threat of rook g5 after king c7, what is the move that black white should play? Knight c6 is threatened. Absolutely. Knight e5. Stop this knight. No counter. He is not even trying to calculate some uh, rook g5 or anything. He is simply saying, I'm not giving any counter. You want to come to b4? Wait a second. Check. Threatening here. And finally, finally, he starts taking the pawn. And wins this rook pawn in game easily. Okay, the problem also here is after rook d4, again the rook is kind of zugzwang. So this was Fort Winnie Galakin. Uh, the next game, uh, can somebody tell uh, what is this game? You know, you, you don't have to really... Uh, it's 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 completely fine if you don't know the game, but I'm just curious how many of you have seen this game. No, yeah. Ah, this one is actually no one as of now. Maybe I asked too early. Maybe after a few moves you will actually get it. Okay. So let me make a few moves, maybe you'll get the game. Bishop c6 happened, take castle, aiming for this pawn, take, take, take white to play, how would you play as white here, I see a lot of queen f4, it actually never uh, occurred to me, Queen a4, sorry, a4 was not, again, wrong mouse click. If you play queen a4, it's possible, but castle. The correct move was uh, rook c1, of course. Rook c1 and, uh, as some of you said, g4. h4. <clears throat> I cannot be absolutely sure about this. I mean, this is my own interpretation. The reason why it played queen c1, it's a good move, but definitely not strongest. Strongest would have been uh, rook c1 and uh, g4, h4. I think queen c1 was a psychological move. We are seeing the game uh, Bordwinik versus Tal from World Championship, 11th game in Moscow, 1961. And it could be psychological that uh, Bordwinik, who, who is very famous for you know marching his pawns, g4, h4, there are so many games. But against Tal, probably he did not want to uh, get into such a complicated, uh, such a wild position, let me, let me put it this way. Although White is absolutely winning here. He chose one of the most safest moves. And now this is undoubtedly not to Tal's liking. 
Tal never liked uh, this kind of position in general. Can someone tell me what is the best defense here uh, for black? Pretty much the only way actually. See, if you play normally, like let's say some castle or rook c8, someday the knight will come here. Once the knight gets to c6, he cannot come to b8, he cannot come to c8 because with the king on g8, there will be knight e7 check, which means this rook will be fixed. The other rook also cannot come to c8 because of knight uh, e7 check. So you need to create counter. It's a bit counterintuitive. C5 also does not help us. C5 will take rook into C5. Knight G8, we don't have that much time actually. Knight G8, let's say even, even then G4 is also coming in. Yeah? Also, let's say knight C6, knight E7, knight A5. And we are entering. How else can you defend? Let me flip the board. G5 is very radical. I'll just take G5, Bishop G5, Knight E4, but you are pawned down. And let's not forget this knight is not permanent. Yeah, I'll play F3. Okay, let's let's break it down. When the knight comes to C6, let's say we move the king, yeah. Let's say we play something. Imagine this, you get f6, you could put your king here. Our main problem is rook coming to c7, which is protected by which is protected by this bishop on f4. So this combination is very deadly. So that is why it's knight h5. Because now if you take here, See how the position has changed. Does it look very scary now? Does this position look very scary at all? You can even take if you want. Because, okay, I cannot take because of rook c8, but king d7, knight b5. Okay, we start changing. Now we are also active. At least we are creating counterplay. A lot of counterplay. You know, our rook is entering. Bishop is coming. But Tal did not play this. Flip the board. Tal played castle. Here, Bodvinik could have taken knight c6. Bodvinik went f3. Once again, allowing knight h5. And now, finally, this happened. <laughs> so, white to play. Look at this monster. It is controlling both the rooks. How about when he played here? There are many ways. What is the weakness in black's position? One of the weakness. Hey, I like this idea. Rook. Somebody said group B1 and knight B8. Aesthetically very pleasing, but I'm not sure if that's the ideal way yeah a7 pawn of course a7 pawn is the weakness so one idea of course you could play rook c3 which is very strong uh, but when he chose something else he decided he'll put his pawn on a6 given a chance so he goes a4 knight d7 now if let's say we play a5 it's possible to play a5 bishop d3 and so on Found another way. Black is threatening knight b6, knight c4. He said, I stop in a different manner. Bishop d6. 
so what was the point of bishop d6 after knight b6 what what many wanted not knight e7 you you definitely do not want to get rid of this knight at this point yeah bishop c5 is correct of course now you get this pawn so again i remember when i saw this game uh, long back back then i had the concept you know opposite color bishop is this end games are drawish so one pawn up you know this is close to draw so first time when i saw this game it was it made a great impression it was like how about when he won so easily from a draw's position but of course i mean uh, this position is completely hopeless for black it's not just about the pawn but it's also about the piece play this rook is controlling everything this rook is tied down uh our bishop and pawn are mutually protected what do you think the plan should be so botvinik says uh, have you heard of second weakness right while black's forces is kind of obliged to protect on queen side white goes for the king side slowly but surely look at his moves first the center bring the king go for okay rook uh, c3 okay this is simply avoiding rook b6 uh nothing positional here and now go for the second weakness opening up now i am coming for the h6 pawn also again there are many ways i kind of like this move king d2 creates a path here and also if need be the king can go from this side the moment black allowed a6 of course we go a6 and resigns king c1 and resigns the last game of today's class last position let's say the following uh, the last two games that we saw uh, bodwinning versus alekhan and the bodwinning versus tal helped me to win a win an important game so was playing in indonesia against a uh, strong grandmaster he was 2600 plus 2630 actually we both of us were 2631 and knowing these two games helped me a lot actually to win this game first the botvinik alekhan game what did we say in botvinik alekhan game and also botvinik tal game that uh, if i think about this it is white to play there are three files where black rook can come which file do you think is scary for me exactly because the moment the rook comes to c8 this square supported by this bishop becomes deadly in order to stop that i will have to play bishop c3 now my bishop was doing a very important job what was it doing what is this bishop doing essentially for a long term it's blocking this king right the king cannot come so i definitely do not want my bishop on c3 so the first move is rook c7 now in indonesia this tournament we did not have any 40 moves uh, time control so it was 1 hour 30 minutes game finish so around here i think we both had like 10 minutes or 15 minutes so it was more about you know intuitive play we cannot uh, calculate everything we are kind of approaching time pressure so first thing is okay we take the c5 but 
while playing rook c7 i had to calculate one important line though what is black threatening by playing a5 a4 what did he create beautiful excellent guys so not not rook a5 there is a concrete threat yeah i see a lot of right answers sai arjun uh ivan there are many yeah this is a very serious threat we cannot afford to play a3 he wants to play bishop b1 very nasty move forcing a3 then he will put his bishop on b3 and he will say okay show me your winning plan how to deal with bishop b1 and do not tell me rook c1 because the moment you say rook c1 right you allowed something else and then you cannot say rook a1 i mean that's that's definitely not the way how else can we deal with this no b3 i'll be very scared actually because i am immediately were allowing uh, some counter shushant and vaishali fantastic that's the only try like absolutely only try we cannot do anything else we cannot afford to play a3 we cannot play rook c1 because of bishop b4 bishop d5 so how else you can defend this pawn exactly So rook c3. Absolutely. Shomritha, Nihal, Trostan, Jerome, Vashik, everyone basically in my and rook a3. So now not only this is protected, but also okay, uh, this rook is much better. Yeah, there is pin. One should always watch out for b4 or b3. My opponent decided to play for activity. Well, bishop e4 is possible now, but uh, yeah, let's say I make some move g3. Okay, let's say you play bishop d5. I can any time play a move like let's say improve my king. So here is an advantage, right? I can improve my king while you cannot, and then at right time I can play b4, keeping winning chances. So rook c8 was played in the game. Now here, h3. So now we see again the king is weak. Played rook b4. Sorry, uh, after that he played bishop a2. Played rook b4. Uh, this is of course uh, winning. I mean, uh, there is no way, you know, this can be stopped. And black plays rook c2. Threatening uh, to take the pawn. So rook d4 happened. Bishop d5, g3. This position is essentially black should be able to hold. I want to ask you something here. Something that um, does not require particular calculation, but just think about it. Let's say I give you following options. Okay. My question is, how do you define this pawn structure for black? Of course, everything else is more or less fixed. I am giving you some option. Do I want to play f6? Do I want to play g5? Should I wait and allow him to play h4, h5? Or after h4, should I play h5? It is not a very uh, easy question to answer, and you can imagine uh, during a game, we can never be sure which one. Do I want to play g6? Do I want to play uh do i want to play g5 or f5 or f6 or i simply wait or should i play h4 h5 and g6 and sit uh the only thing Black did wrong was what happened in the game because I I don't think otherwise it was very easy to uh, win. 
yes, F6 is possible. F5 is possible. But one can understand, uh, you know, the hesitation. Hesitation of going here because of you are kind of weakening the pawn. The second option is, uh, okay, G6 option. G5 is a good move also, trying to get King G7, King G6. My opponent played a move which was uh, some sort of oversight, I think. He underestimated my plan. Played King H7, staying non committal I played the move Rook F4, giving him a tough choice. Like after King G6, okay, this King could be stuck. Like after King G6, already I can play something like H4. It says, okay, the rook on d4 or f4, it doesn't really matter. Okay, let me come back. Because you know what? You cannot play king d4 because I have rook c4. If you play something like a4, I play rook a2. And this pawn is gone. There will be some sort of uh, bishop c6. Or I get some sort of counter. Now, a really important question, h4. Position got slightly more worse. Do you play h5 or not? Do you allow him to play h5 or you go h5? Okay, I'm waiting for answers still. I mean, many of you get. Also, what is the reasoning? Hello, yeah. It's I see in the class it's almost 50-50. One is actually almost a blunder. At this point, it's not very easy to make decision. That uh, okay, maybe h4, some g4, f4, g5 will happen like this Bodvenic game, Bodvenic tal. But h5 is actually a very bad move. This is what happened in the game. Let's now flip the board. You know why h5 is a very bad move? Just think about one piece, the rook on f4. Let's see what all it is doing. Attacking this, stopping f6, protecting this, making sure there could be a4, fixing the king. Worst part, you can do nothing about this rook anymore. Absolutely nothing about this rook because there is no g5. Which means this rook will stay here for the rest of the game doing some five uh, multitasking and white can black can do nothing about this. With that note, my king is now free. So this is somewhat like uh, inspiration from this Tal Bodvenic game. King d3, rook a2. I will just change the setting because I want don't want you to see the arrows. Yeah, sorry. So, King C3 happened in the game. Bishop C6. How are we uh, going to progress here? Black says, if you play King D, King B3, I'll play King Bishop D5. And right now I'm stopping a4. What did we learn from uh, Bodvinik Tal game? These two pieces are fixed, like in the previous Bodvinik game, where Black Rook was stuck on a6 with the pawn on uh, a5 and Bishop on b6. Second weakness, beautiful. What is the second weakness here? Where does this guy belong? F7 is the second weakness. Beautiful. So this guy belongs to E7. Perfect. So let's make the journey. King B3. Well, King B4 is possible, but when I can gain a tempo, why not? Because uh, this way, again, I'm threatening A4, which means he has to play Bishop C6. 
he could give some checks which would have been probably better but anyway i am my destination he cannot stop so king made the journey and once it comes here the pawn will be gone so black plays this now let's compare this position with this position here black's only king was fixed due to this rook but once king came to e7 now these two guys are fixed the guys are fixed play a4 without bothering about moves like bishop c2 as both the pawns will fall i'll take on f7 i'll give a check and take on e6 also so time to progress cannot do anything like okay if he plays this i'm taking all the pawns so a4 plays rook a2 now I want to play a5. I want to make sure I can release this rook. I want to. So the bishop on d6 was an obligation because of this pawn. But now we have played a4. Where does this bishop belong? Absolutely, Anthony. Correct answer. More precisely, not on c7. Yes, Trostan on b6. You want the bishop on b6 so that again this Bodvinik tal kind of thing happens, and also it protects the f2 pawn. So then you go bishop c7, play rook a1, a5. And here another important thing, again, there are many ways to win. But uh, I started to think that uh, in the following manner, uh, my bishop and these pawns, these are self-protected. I don't have to do anything to give any extra attention, which means my rook is free right now. Currently, my rook and king, both pieces are needed to fix this. Can I do this only with only one piece? Is there a way so that I don't need the king? With only rook, I will fix these two. Is there a way? Xavier, absolutely. No, f3, g4, why do you need to break? Where can you improve this rook? So that the rook alone will take care of these two. I, I will not need the king at all. Risha, yes. f8 is the square. If you get your rook to f8 with his king on h7, it's completely stuck. So rook b4. Now let's look at this position self-protected, the rook alone, fixing these two, which means the king is free, king starts a journey. Now there is no need to, uh, probably this is also winning, but at this point I did not want to calculate. I'm, I'm pretty sure okay, it's possible to play f4 and rook f7, uh, but why to bother? I mean, I, I will not get any brilliancy for playing f4 and king f7 anyways. I mean, right now also these are fixed. So I, all I need is to get the king out. So king d6. Yeah, and he resigned here. So, yeah, basically these are the one... Uh, that I wanted to show for today's uh, Black Skachev from uh, France, actually. Vladislav Kachev, uh, Kachev, I think that's how I pronounce it. So he was 26-31, I was also 26-31. It was penalty met round. I won this game and I think last round I drew with Wang Yiwei and uh, with, uh, we won the tournament jointly with Li Chao. So, yeah. As you saw in most of these examples, right? Uh, somewhere or uh, other, the ideas are kind of uh, getting repeated. So, if you study a lot of classics and in general, you know, uh, 
read books and i was not not for once i was thinking about botvinnik alakan or botvinnik tal during the game but it kind of stays and at, all these things happens at subconscious level so i think it helps a lot if you uh, you know if you if you study classics and uh, if you see a lot of games so all right guys uh, thanks a lot and to all our youtube viewers uh, yeah there is a poll uh, for this class uh, usually we are doing this uh, after every class so that you know we get to know which course is ideal for which group so please uh, uh, do vote accordingly and uh, yeah thanks to our youtube audience also for joining yeah those who has doubt uh, now can tell me i will stop